The end of the Pact of Silence has allowed many developments in Spain. The efforts of Emilio Silva have perhaps been the greatest vehicle for change. What began for Emilio as a search for his grandfather's remains has turned into a countrywide quest to dig up mass graves of Republican victims, as he explains. Ten years ago I left my job in a magazine to write a book about my grandfather. He was a political militant during the Second Republic. He was killed by the Falangist in 1936. And then I went to the area in the northwest of Spain where he lives. And I start to talk with uh, old people about the Civil War and the years after the Civil War. And then I found a man, a, a communist militant, who said, I know the place of the grave of your grandfather. And some months later, with a group of archaeologists and forensic doctors, I, we opened the mass grave. I identified my grandfather with a DNA test and I put his bones with my grandmother. Now Spaniards are digging in their thousands to find their own relatives' remains. But it is not only in Spain that these excavations are impacting. Retired fireman Alan Craig from Drumchapel was a toddler when his father, also Alan, was killed at the Battle of Jarama. Uh, he was taken to a, a field hospital in Tarragoda, where he was, um, he died five days later. He was then given a decent burial in the cemetery just next to the, the hospital. But after the war, the fascists moved in and desecrated all the graves. Now the people who were um, the Republicans, they were, along with my father, they were all turfed over this wall at the cemetery into a, a refuse pit. Oh, I was actually horrified at first because, you know, I thought, wait a minute, this is not a, this is not a way to treat a dead person, no matter whose side you're on, you know. Until recently, Alan had never even seen a photograph of his father. I wrote to, again, to the Friends of the International Brigade, and they told me to get in touch with the Marxist Museum, our library in London and they, t <laughs> they said to me, yes, we've got a photograph of your father and uh, I said, well, is there any chance of purchasing a, a copy? They said, certainly, £20. So I said, it's a bargain, you know. So a but when the photograph came in the big envelope, I thought, I, I don't know what to expect, you know. And uh, the strange thing was, as soon as I opened up, I knew right away which one was my father. I was so delighted, hum very humble. I, I, my daughter even, she was in tears. That was quite, uh, it's quite a, a very humbling experience. Alan is determined to use Spain's newfound openness to locate and rebury the body of his dad. Okay, so this is us playing a game, the fascists. Like Alan, the relatives of those who fought in Spain still live with the war's legacy. John Dunlop's son Norman has redesigned a war game featuring some of the locations in which his father fought. And I've just used it as a kind of tool to um, learn about the war um, because I didn't really understand my dad's experience of it very well but because the game has given me a focus around which to sort of organise um, knowledge about the war then it's you know, matched up my interest in wargaming and computers with, um, with my dad's life experience. One of the things I would say about him is that uh, the media is interested in him as the interesting thing that he did in media terms, which is going and fighting in Spain. But to me, he was a great dad. And that is the most important thing about him to me. Now, that he fought in Spain is a good thing. Uh, it was a her heroic thing that he did. And I, th I feel like, he, you know, to me, he was sort of my hero, even as an adult. Willie Maley is a professor at Glasgow University. With his brother John, he wrote a play about their father Jimmy's imprisonment in Spain. The ideals that led Jimmy into joining the international brigades influenced his everyday life. 
we didn't have to worry about raids under the bed. We had a raid tucking us into bed at night. I think it did affect us. I mean, my, f my father was teetotal. He never drank, never smoked. There was nine pints of milk in the bath because we didn't have a fridge. There was nine pints of milk in the bath. He was on the side of the underdog. That's one thing that's true about him. But, you know, he wasn't a, a, he was a card-carrying member of the Communist Party. But I would say he wasn't necessarily a, a, a dogmatist. He had, his, he had his, his dogmas, you know, and he had his very strong views. Um, by God, he had his strong views, you know what I mean? And, and, and I think that's a good thing. We lived in a street where it's a true story. There were people sometimes out without shoes. And my father would come up and get a pair of shoes and give them it. Now, because we had nothing, we didn't always like the idea of my father going down and giving things to other people. But there was always, you always knew there were people poorer than you because you could look out the window and see them. You know, when I was about five, I always remember a guy uh, stopping me as I was going into our stair and he said, your father's a dirty communist. And I went, oh no, he's a clean one. <laughs> you know. Jenny Renton runs a bookshop in Edinburgh. She has lived with the legacy of her father Don's time in Spain. I think um, I am proud of him, um, very proud of him, really. Uh, I admired his courage hugely. Um, he had a beautiful smile and a great warmth. What I would have liked would be able to remember my childhood and remember playing a game with him. Though they could not defeat Franco, the Scots that went to Spain had squared up to fascism before the rest of the world got around to it. Scotland can be proud of them. We are very, 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 very grateful uh, for these people because uh, for me it's uh, the, the most uh, solidarity of one people is take his life to fight for the freedom in another country. I can't quote it word for word, but it goes for evil to succeed. It only takes good men to do nothing. And these were good men, and they did something. And I think it's an example that we can take today to make sure that evil doesn't succeed. No, no, I don't get going, no, no, no. I'm quite, I'm quite pleased I went. I mean, I thought it was something that should have been done, you know. Oh, it's one of the greatest experiences of my life. Uh, it's the highlight of my life, apart from being married and having my family. I'm only sorry we lost. It was, I think, probably the most inspiring moment of my life. Even if I live to be a hundred, I'll always be glad I went to Spain. This programme is available at stv.tv forward slash Franco and on the STV player. Discuss with me, Peter Dow and other viewers of this video by registering your own username account with the Far Freedom Forums.